As we get into 2012, we're uh, trying to understand this new real-time web and understand what's going on in the social media space and this new social TV thing. That's why I'm going to the Consumer Electronics Show to get up to date. Anyways, we have a new company. Actually, it's not so new anymore. It's called Echo, and they power a lot of stuff underneath ESPN and Sports Illustrated and lots of other places. We're going to talk about it right now. Who are you? My name is Chris Liu, and I'm CEO and co-founder of Echo. Uh, our position is that the entire web is moving from a series of static pages that are linked together to a series of real-time experiences that more mimic TV, and Echo is presupposing to power the entire web with real-time. Yeah, we certainly saw that move in the 2011 with Google Plus and Quora and, on and, and Echo, of course, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, where we see real-time things happening. I call these addictive technologies, right? Because if something's going on... You have on, an addictive personality. And I totally... <laughs> it's hard to go to sleep when people, when new posts keep coming mm -hmm. on your pages, right? And, and things pop up and That's things change. And friend feed may have been your first addiction, I think, in that sort of real-time way, yeah. Very much so. And so what are you seeing happen going into 2012? Well, I think, I think the, as I said in the intro, the, the first thing is that we are moving... Uh, people will no longer build websites as we know them, a static experience. Uh, what they will build is a real-time social experience so that when I walk up to a site, things that are relevant will stream into the page for me. Uh, we will move from a search and navigate world to a world where I, where I come to an experience and the data flows in as it happens from around the world. And that could be something as basic as a sports score changing as the, the scores change or the wind or sun or what have you to stock prices to something more interesting like what people are doing on the site or what my friends are doing on the site or maybe some metaphors that you're familiar with, liking, commenting, sharing, buying, viewing, playing, etc. Well, now we're getting into Facebook land, right? And Google Plus is struggling That's to deal it. with Facebook still. Facebook, I think, is a new kind of media company, one where the media comes to you. You just sit on Facebook.com and it just keeps flowing right. in, right? But it, to do that, he, Zuckerberg needs to know all about you, your religion, your family, your sports interests, your politics, your, you know, who you are. Because if, if I know who you are, what kind of music you like, I can bring more media to you, right? That's right, and, and normally all you have to do is watch the user behavior, right? They will tell you who they are by the way they interact with your experiences. So to the extent that you have a static article, you're going to learn very little about your user. To the extent that you provide a lot of real-time experiences, things like a like button, or follow, or thumbs up, or share, or comment, the minute a user starts engaging with those metaphors, you now start to learn about who they are. Yeah, that, that's why I liked uh, Facebook's Open Graph. So are you building your own Open Graph for Echo? <laughs> are you studying the verbs of people at ESPN or Sports Illustrated? I, I think Mark has actually been looking at Echo. No, <laughs> <laughs> no uh, obviously uh, Facebook is uh, preeminent in the space, and web sites and publishers would do well to look at and decompose what Facebook has done. They've done an extremely good job at bringing real-time metaphors about uh, bringing things that I like and I want to the front and uh, being relentless with this. Uh, they have uh, done very little about sitting on their hands. Everything they're doing is part of a thoughtful strategy to bring real-time and social to the web. Yeah. So explain to me what Echo is, because it's a platform underneath sites like ESPN, they're not trying to use Facebook, right? They're using Echo instead, right? That's right. I, I think there is, uh, there's really two schools of thought. Uh, the first is that you can connect um, your property and your content directly to a social network, whether it be Twitter or Facebook, and essentially drive the engagement to those properties and really release yourselves from being a dot-com anymore. Yeah. Uh, and and that's, that's one approach. Uh, at the so other like TechCrunch uses that, where Facebook com it is driving all the comments underneath the TechCrunch post, right? That's right. So when you use a Facebook service, um, to be very clear, that is a, a component of Facebook on your site. That site is being metastasized. It's essentially being, uh, it's, Facebook is expanding its footprint from its .com now to a position on TechCrunch. Not good or bad, it's just now part of Facebook. 
So the registration, uh, the visitor engagement, the data ownership, and the links all go back to Facebook. Yeah. Fair enough. That's one approach. The other approach is that you can build that same real-time experience using Echo and keep the brand, keep the registration, keep the user engagement, and keep the data and the monetization on your site. And so those are really the two schools of thought. So you have customers like ESPN and ABC and NBC and Universal Music that are all Echo customers that have decided to own their own future, right? They invest in the content and they want the return on investment on the content. Right. Uh, now that is not to say that they don't have hearty relationships with Twitter and Facebook, uh, predominantly for distribution, right? You know, throw your links out into the social graph, into the news feed, and have people come back to your site. Yeah. But they want to they want to be an equal social peer on the social web. Google Plus also showed me that there is an existing community that doesn't want to be on Facebook at all. Dave Weiner deleted his Facebook. So. Even if it's only 1%, there's still 1% of 800 million people, is still quite a few people out there who aren't part of Facebook, right? And is Echo able to use things that aren't just one social network? You know, are you building your own identity system that's separate? No, no, absolutely not. We use the technologies that are there and available. Um, so certainly we would support a site using Facebook Connect you know, Twitter, Google, et cetera, as an authentication mechanism to get onto the domain. Now, a site might also have its own registration and sign up for a newsletter and so on and so. Um, but to your point, uh, we believe the world is like a rainbow. It is not just blue Facebook data, right? There's beautiful information in Twitter and Quora, uh, Instagram, and uh, Path, and a million other of these microservices where uh, awesome content is being created, that content can be absorbed in real time and displayed in a stream somehow on a dot com. So for example, if ESPN is showing a football game, you could have each player with a real time stream of information about that player. Photos, tweets, Facebook status updates, Instagrams, YouTube videos, whatever, and essentially create a real time live stream for that sports figure. And that's what ESPN is, is building now. This means that a media company like ESPN, which already has its own audience that might not even be on Twitter or Facebook, gets to serve their audience very well without forcing them to sign into Facebook or Twitter, right? Again, I think an authentication scheme where you're harnessing a Facebook or a Twitter is perfectly acceptable. Um, at the same time, if you're ESPN and you have an article about Tebow, for example, which uh, was an interesting, they did an interesting post recently that got 120,000 comments on the page, on the ESPN page. And so some people want to speak Twitter, some spe people want to speak Facebook, some people want to speak in forums or comments. And so the site really wants to be open to all sort of native tongues, yeah. right? Not just a single flavor or a single voice. So if someone wants to speak in Google+, Plus, allow them to do so, but remember to bring that data in and then harness it and put it on your own pages. Yeah. So you built a real-time database system for That's publishers, right? That's and, right. And this, published, this database system has its own query language? That's right. So essentially, Echo is a real-time database that allows you to ingest virtually any activity data. So that activity data could be native comments on your site, it could be forum threads, it could be your RSS feeds, it could be Twitter, it could be Facebook. It allows you to bring all of that data in and then with a simple query language, pull out the data that you want and build a real-time stream. And so, for instance, if you were to write an article on Obama, you might do a query that says, show me all tweets that contain the hashtag Obama, all Facebook status updates that have the term Obama, all photos from Instagram that have a tag Obama, et cetera, et cetera, and you would have a real-time stream of the global view of Obama at that particular moment. Now that's interesting. So, and that's separate from the personalization technology. That I would probably have to build, right? If I'm a uh, big publishing company and I'm gonna track my users' behavior so that I can feed them that I know that they're uh, Obama. Because I, like, I know Rocky doesn't want to see anything about Obama. He wants to know about all the other candidates. <laughs> so, and his behavior on my site would tell me that, right? But I would have to build that personalization code separate, or is that, uh, does that come in the uh, Echo engine as well? Right, well, I, I think what we're getting to in 2012 is more of a filtered world, right? So 2011 was about aggregating these data feeds. And what you quickly realize is you're flooded with information, 
right? And so you now need to provide filtering mechanisms to provide some relevancy. And the one that you uh, just referenced is a great one. What are my friends saying in this stream? So I might get a stream of 120,000 comments like we did on Tebow, but there may only be 50 of them that are from my Twitter and Facebook friends. And so one mechanism is filter by friends. Got it. Or another might be show and me. And does Echo do that, or do I have to build that separate from Echo and say, hey, here's my, here's my 50 friends, Sh filter it over there. Or, or Tell me what comes with Echo and what I would have to build. The, the filter by friends query will be coming out in 2012. It'll be part of the Echo sort of query language. And you would be able to do uh, very much like a Facebook experience, but Facebook Plus. Right now, f the Facebook activity feed shows you uh, items that were created by your friends on Facebook. Yeah. But a more interesting feed for me at least might be, show me all the items from my Twitter followers my Facebook friends and my Google Plus friends. Got it. Right? It's a broader view of what I consider friendship. Yeah. Uh, and then there might be other aspects that would be uh, show me just uh, tweets from high reputation users on clout, or show me just comments from people that have five or more likes. Uh -huh. And so you can provide a number of filtering mechanisms to winnow down the data to see just what you want for that particular moment. Oh, that's cool. Can I mix uh, streams like Obama and Ron Paul? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And can I say, f show me fewer items about Obama and more items about Ron Paul? Is that yeah, something? These, that's right, you can. Uh, and maybe even going beyond just basic filtering, I think 2012 is going to be about visualizations. So uh, looking at a real-time stream of 50,000 items isn't really absorbable for most of us, right? It's just, it doesn't mean anything. But yeah. you might easily extract from that a real-time heat map. What are people in this part of the country saying or that part of the country saying? Or which one of these athletes is getting more attention right now? Uh, and those type of visualizations will allow sort of a human absorbable um, metaphor for these real-time streams. So you can see where we're getting to now with a social TV thing. We keep wondering who's going to nail the tablet experience on the couch, right? We have the big screen in front of us. We have the tablet in, on our on our seat, and we can tweet now. We can Facebook. We can Google Plus. We can tell everybody what we think is happening at the Oscars, and that's the first stage of social TV. But this new stage sounds like that we're going to be able to watch the world and what it says about the Oscars, and mm -hmm. filter it down to something that's digestible, mm -hmm. and then see visualizations like, is everybody saying something about Lady Gaga showing up there or something like that. Um, we've done a lot of work with social TV in the last year. Um, most publishers will start off using Echo for some basic experiences like real-time commenting or real-time forums or real-time media grids or something like that. Uh, but we have some uh, customers that have really kind of cracked the code on social TV. Uh, NBC Universal with their USA um, network, uh, ABC, WWE, Discovery, Showtime and the like are all using Echo to make your iPhone or your tablet as important as your remote control. Mm -hmm. And it's not just that they're showing a stream of, say, tweets and Facebook status updates about the show. That's, that's sort of interesting, but not really interesting. What they're doing is injecting polls, for example, at the top of the stream and asking what viewers think the outcome of the show will be. They will inject question-answer pairs to, uh, say, ask an actor where did they get their wardrobe or what have you? And so these experiences are, are fascinating because the user can now, uh, or the viewer can go to the show, obviously watch the show, and then on their laptop, ask an actor a question. The producers on the back end will pull the interesting questions and push them out to an actress or actor who will answer them, and then that answer will go on air across the bottom of the screen, or they'll pre-roll it right before the commercial. And, uh, and so USA Networks and WWE have already done these things. Wow. And they've gotten um, audience increases. And, and you can imagine the number of people that would normally go to a dot com for a TV show. Yeah. Pretty low, right? I mean, what are you going to do there? Get the show schedule or something like that, right? Yeah. USA Network has moved from very low traffic to an increase of over 300,000 uniques in 60 days. Yeah. And so these people are really grabbing this metaphor. It, it's almost like death of the couch potato. Right, you no longer watch the show as a passive entity. Right, you are in community with 
10,000 or 100,000 other people watching that show. Now, this is a big deal. This uh, Super Bowl this year is the first one that's being streamed, yep. and it's the first one that's going to be really viewable on a tablet PC, on an iPad or an Android tablet, right? And it's going to be the first one where we have million, hundred, maybe yeah, tens of millions of people who have tablets who are going to be able to talk with each other. It, 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 do you think this is really a, a huge shift in the way we're dealing with media? It's, it's gigantic. I mean, I'll give two examples. Uh, USA Networks uh, will schedule an actor to do a Q&A during the show, and they will literally get hundreds and hundreds of questions pouring through the stream. People are extremely interested in connecting directly with a celebrity or superstar. Yeah. Um, and what's fascinating is suppose you ask a question and the actor responds. That question answer pair actually spins up its own chat room because then hundreds of people want to reply to what the answer was. And so what started off as a question answer pair in essence becomes a chat room that winds up becoming a forum thread. And so these metaphors kind of trickle down to each other. Another example is uh, WWE, and I don't know if you watch the, the wrestling matches. Uh, no, as that's much more Rocky style. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are crushing it with social TV, and I'll, I'll give a fascinating example. They had um, The Rock, who yeah. Rocky, I'm sure, is familiar with. Yeah, he's, he's giving me the devil <laughs> fist pump over there. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> so, so The Rock returns to the ring, right? Yeah. And he's doing battle, and he flies into Boston and gets into the ring, and they sadly, script him to um, get into the ring. And he says, when I say boots to asses, it trends on Twitter. And sure enough, he engaged millions of people to start tweeting boots to asses. And it becomes the top trending subject on Twitter. And then he went into the ring and says another hashtag. And that thing starts to trend. And so what they did is they started a, essentially a Twitter war. And you could start visualizing these things, which actor has more power, et cetera, et cetera. And so what they're doing is they're harnessing social tools that the visitors want to see and use anyway with the tools they have in their hand to create an engaging experience. Wow. And so I think in 2012, you'll see a lot more sort of scripted uh, social gestures where the, the producers are actually encouraging the audience to do something, whether it's take a photo or tweet or what have you, and then harness those social gestures back on the screen somehow. I should start a tag for Rocky. <laughs> 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 we could get him to trend. <laughs> this is crazy stuff. Yeah, it's really fun. So I, I guess the message is if you're, if you're doing on-air broadcast, you need to be in social TV. You need to get your feet wet. We are in what we call kindergarten with this. This is just the very first phase of it. And if you're a publisher and you're still building the notion, you're still doing wireframes around a static page, yeah. cut it out. Yeah. That is the past. It will be a very short number of years where it will be unacceptable to have a static website at all. Yeah. Facebook is teaching roughly a billion people that when I come to a website, it's real time, yeah. it's social, and it's personal. And so the object right now is, how can I build real-time social experiences around my content? Whether it's ESPN being you know, sports, or whether it's AMC around movies, or what have you, you need to stop looking at a static experience and start understanding how would someone want to engage with this piece of content. Um, yeah. One only needs to look at the two underlying metaphors, right? A magazine or a book page is a web page, right? They're, they're copies of each other. How long do you stare at the same page? Uh, it's hours sometimes. It's, <laughs> well, if, if you're challenged really over some of the words, yes. Um, <laughs> no, if, I mean, if it's social and, and it's uh, fun and it's but, moving, But a yeah, static so page. A static page, a, static a few page, seconds. A few right? seconds, you're going to leave it. Yeah. How long do you stare at TV? Hours. Right? That's right. How long do you engage on a Facebook page? Hours. Right? Or a friend feed or something where things are happening. Yeah. And so that, if you look at the time on site for Facebook jacking through the roof, it's happening for a reason. Yeah. Right? It's not the colors on Facebook, it's the metaphors that they're using, yeah. real time and social. And if nothing, Echo is that underlying platform that allows you to be the Facebook of insert your content type. Yeah. Well, now you know why uh, Zuckerberg is trying to get to our privacy, right? And study right. our music and our 
I mean, he wants to put data from my jawbone up onto my Facebook timeline. Why? Because right. that'll addict everybody else. So what is Scoble doing? Is he exercising today? Is he is he listening to Skrillex? Is he you know what's he doing? And it shows up, and it, things that move on the page keep you addicted to it. That's right, and and I think uh, publishers would be served well to remember that no matter how powerful a Facebook is, it is it is and always will be a generic platform, yeah. right? ESPN. It, you can't monetize there. You can't put your own brand there. That's right. And yeah. and consider the enormous amount of expertise and historical content that ESPN has on sports. Yeah. How they could surface stats, data, photos, editorial, video clips, etc., to create a real-time experience around a sports figure, a team, a league, a topic, right? ESPN will always have that power. And as they leverage that internal understanding of sports with these metaphors, they will become the powerhouse of sports. Wow. You guys have been around a couple of years now. It's not just a startup that's coming out today, right? It's been, it's been around, so. That's right, we're five years old, and we originally started with comments, and then we moved uh, two years ago, we added a feature called Real Time, which yeah. meant that when you added a comment, it would fold into everyone else's page in real time. And that's really where we came up with the idea that not only should the comment role be real time, but every single element on a web page should be real time. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're helping to move the entire web from a static experience to a real time experience. Yeah. And how are you guys funded right now? Tell me a little bit about we. Yeah. yeah. What, what, where are you in the progression of your company? Uh, we raised a Series A, yeah. uh, which was a little over a million dollars. We raised a B, which was a little over three million. So there's roughly five million in, yeah. and uh, you'll see us coming out in, in somewhere in the first half of 2012 with a C round. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, very Sounds exciting like a good stuff. Year, a good year ahead. Uh, since our theme is small teams, big Maybe. impacts, yes. right? How are you? Uh, how are you empowering small teams to really rock and roll, or how is your small team doing using technology to really change the world? I think what we've done is we made a very complicated set of technologies to build real time easy. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you've heard Cassandra and Hadoop and all of these no SQL technologies, and then on top of that, you need to do a whole bunch of filtering and on and on and on. For most publishers, it is extremely difficult to rebuild the Facebook infrastructure. And so what we essentially do is give a generic version of the Facebook infrastructure for your data. You walk up to the platform, you use a very simple SQL-like query language, and you're off and running. So you guys abstracted all that complex technology Absolutely. into something that that's right. a guy sit, sitting at a publishing house can understand and, and do. Yes, that's right. Because they don't have uh, 20 geeks sitting in a room. <laughs> that's right. I mean, Facebook has you know a billion dollars and a thousand or a couple thousand engineers to build real time and social. And so it is a big problem. The other thing that we've done is we've done a great job with partnering. So for authentication, for example, we use Jan Rain, and for spam detection, we outsource that, and for gamification, we outsource that. So we're focusing ourselves on the real-time database and then partner with all of the other service. It takes essentially an industry to solve this problem, not one single company. No, that's great. We're going to be interviewing some of those companies on our show in the next couple of months. I know Jan Rain is on my calendar. so Yeah, excellent. Well, cool. Yeah. Lots of fun stuff to look forward to in the real-time addictive web, right? That's right. Where do we learn more about uh, Echo? About Echo.com. About Echo.com. Yeah. And where do we find you? At Chris, at K-H-R-I-S. Very cool. Follow Thanks. me, I'll follow you. Yeah. Thanks for coming you, out, man. Yeah, be well. See you at South By. <laughs> Woo! <laughs>